Hurricane Aaron re-intensifying and growing in size as it begins to work up the eastern seaboard, bringing impacts to the United States. Meanwhile, more potential trouble looming behind it. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this wonderful uh, Tuesday, August 19th. And sure enough, continuing to track Hurricane Aaron, the storm weakened somewhat, now re-strengthening and growing in size as it begins to pull up the eastern seaboard and unfortunately will be bringing life-threatening impacts for some folks uh, here along the coastal sections of the eastern United States. So a lot to break down in today's video, as well as those other waves behind it. And I've got a treat for you at the end with a taste of fall coming up next week. The latest forecast on that. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Gerald, I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. And if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Trying to get to 50K here by the end of hurricane season. Uh, we've uh, seen some great growth over the past couple of weeks, so I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, it's always free to subscribe. So if you like the video and you want to watch more, I mean, it helps me out and it helps you out because it'll keep the videos in your feed. All right, I'll stop rambling. Let's go ahead and dive right on into it today. You can see right there on satellite, Hurricane Aaron jumping out at you in the Atlantic and talk about a big storm. I mean, folks, the outflow from this thing is reaching South America as well as the same latitude here as the Carolinas. So this storm is quite large uh, in just its overall presentation here. Now, the core of it, uh, you know, probably the size of the Bahama Island chain here, but continuing to get larger and continuing to move up the coast. And with this much energy and this large of a storm, boy, oh boy, is the Atlantic angry right now and will stay angry really through a good portion of this week as the storm continues. Uh, to grow in size. It's not the only thing we're watching. Two other waves to monitor here, one behind it down south towards, uh, again, down uh, near South America. Another wave rolling off of Africa currently. We'll dive into both of those as well, uh, but you get the idea. A lot going on in the tropics and a lot to discuss, as you would expect, as we start getting closer and closer to peak hurricane season. I'll tell you, though, still about three or four weeks away from that peak. And to see you know this much action already, probably not a good omen for what's to come the rest of this season. Let's give you the latest tracks and the latest invests, uh, invests Excuse me, that we're uh, monitoring out into the Atlantic. Uh, Hurricane Aaron now back down to a Category 2 storm uh, with winds in that uh, 105 mile an hour range. The storm on many models is expected to continue to strengthen, especially pressure-wise. That pressure is expected to continue to drop. Now, we may not see the winds go up a lot with that. However, the field of wind is going to expand, and that's the problem. And because of that, we do have a tropical storm watches and uh, likely soon to be warnings here up for the Outer Banks of North Carolina as well as storm surge expected. You can see on this map, uh, we'll tell you what these colors mean in a moment, uh, but just know we are going to see some storm surge out of this system, even with it being well offshore just due to the size of uh, Hurricane Aaron. Now behind it, a new uh, area to watch off the coast of Africa near the Cape Verde Islands and an existing area we've already been talking about here. Uh, this orange blob has a 60% chance of developing into our next named storm over the next seven days. The area behind it has a 30% chance, but is actually designated as our next invest or our next area to investigate. And you'll see why that is as we switch on over to satellite imagery. The main development region of the Atlantic lighting up with activity and uh, the one that probably immediately jumps out to you besides obviously Hurricane Aaron over there, which again, we'll dive into uh, more in depth here coming up, but check out this area just south of the uh, Cape Verde Islands. Uh, this is, like I said, been designated as an invest, meaning the National Hurricane Center. Uh, yeah, it's piquing their interest. They're looking at it and they're saying, you know what? This is starting to already look like a name storm and uh, it sure has that look, doesn't it? It's already getting a bit of that shrimp look. You can see the head here and then kind of the tail down below it uh, definitely has that uh, characteristic look you would expect before getting a named storm. That's one problem. The other problem is a lot of our ensemble members and spaghetti models keep this one pretty far south down towards uh, a general track that would bring it near the Antilles. So that's going to be one we need to watch very closely uh, over the next week ahead. Like I said, already looking very good on satellite. And if that one doesn't do it, then boy, oh boy, look at the wave right behind it. Yeah, that one's healthy as well. Now, both of those are pretty far away. What about the one that's a little bit closer uh, now a little less organized here but uh, likely to get something out of this I think over uh, the next week now that could be a name storm or that could just be you know an open wave the good news is the trend with this one has been for an out to sea track which I know is surprising you look at it and you say I mean boy oh boy that's down there that's in uh, South America well the luckily the same thing that's pulling Aaron north is going to likely pull this one north on a similar track now not guaranteed but that has been the trend in the models and uh, a trend that we will definitely 
currently take. Now, Hurricane Aaron itself, obviously, I mean, a mesmerizing thing to look at on satellite. Uh, the uh, outflow from the swarm or the upper level Cirrus not getting far here or getting pretty close to the Carolinas. There it is. And I mean, just look at these bands. I'll tell you, what, a, what an amazing storm to look at on satellite. You don't get many that look like this in terms of size. I mean, we've got lightning lighting up around uh, the storm. And uh, we're, we're very lucky this one's not going to be a direct impact, but still going to see those impacts here for portions of the country, even if not getting that direct landfall with the storm. But I mean, just what a beautiful thing to look at on satellite. Obviously, you know, you hate to see some of the damage and things that these storms make, but uh, you'd be a fool to not say that it is a mesmerizing or you'd be a fool to not say that it's a mesmerizing thing to look at. Uh, I think I worded that right. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's been a long day, folks. <laughs> it's been a very long day for me. So uh, ignore me if I mix up any uh, wordage here, but uh, definitely a very uh, you know strong, powerful storm here on satellite. Now, that's all great, but where in the world's it going and what does that mean for the forecast? Well, let's switch on over now, take a look at some model data and some of those products from the National Hurricane Center and give you the latest on Aaron. The European model showing Aaron right now as it is that big storm expanding and plenty of uh, rain to go around with it. Now, the storm going to pull north. That has not changed. Here's when things go downhill, though. This is tomorrow afternoon. The storm probably at the same latitude of about Jacksonville uh, and getting up near the Carolinas. And uh, this is when the you know seas are going to get really rough for this part of the country, especially the Outer Banks of North Carolina. We're probably going to get some homes swept away. Now, a lot of these homes have already been abandoned due to the fact that just uh, the topography of the Outer Banks has changed over time. That Highway 12 in the Outer Banks easily going to be flooded out. That's why we've seen some evacuations for places like Hatteras Island. Watch the storm continue to pull north here, and uh, I would not be shocked Thursday morning to see some of these outer bands from Aaron clip the outer banks, and that means tropical storm conditions becoming very likely there, and uh, we do have uh, those tropical storm watches likely to be upgraded to warnings here pretty soon uh, due to that likelihood of that storm skirting the coast. Now, it's going to get pretty close to the northeast as well, now further away than the outer banks are going to see, but uh, the storm very large. I mean, uh, again, you can see we've got closed isobars. I mean, you know, the troughing from this thing goes all the way from South Carolina, it looks like, uh, out into the open Atlantic, almost has a bit of a, uh, the shape of a fruit, I guess, almost a pear or maybe a treble clef at the same time. Uh, but uh, this storm is big, the circulation massive, and that's why the Atlantic, again, is going to be so angry and why we're going to see pretty big impacts, honestly, even with the storm being slightly out to sea. You can see it here, uh, the latest run of this same European model with the wind gust map, and we'll bring this all the way up uh, the seaboard here. Uh, this is this uh, tomorrow afternoon winds starting to pick up along the Carolina coastline you know that 20 to 30 uh, gust range is probably going to be likely but notice here we go by Thursday morning and into later in the morning towards the afternoon I mean we've got winds gusting not far from hurricane strength in the outer banks we're talking 70 miles an hour uh, that's going to be enough to really get you know the wave action up it could you know uh, cause a little bit of wind damage luckily the structures out here built for these sorts of winds generally speaking uh, but a breezy day in general I mean, from uh, the triangle of North Carolina, we could be gusting up near 30 miles an hour. Now, no rain there, uh, but the pressure gradient can be plenty strong enough. It's going to be a breezy day in eastern North Carolina. Uh, the PD of South Carolina, especially the Grand Strand up into southeastern Virginia. The Delmarva going to have a windy day. And uh, as we keep on moving this up the coast through your Thursday afternoon, and into your Thursday evening, I mean, check out some of these winds into coastal New Jersey gusting up near tropical storm strength. Now, probably not going to get tropical storm advisories because, again, uh, we're not going to see the rain associated with it, but maybe some wind advisories would not surprise me. This moves all the way up. Talk about strong winds. Long Island could be gusting up near 45, uh, 50, especially the eastern part of the island there, Cape Cod, Nantucket, surrounding areas. You know, we could be up in that 50, 55 mile an hour wind gust range uh, by the time we get to Friday morning and afternoon, coastline of going to see some gusty winds and then we'll even bring it up for our friends here into eastern Canada yeah our folks in Newfoundland Labrador and uh, surrounding areas Ooh, check this out now this is in kilometers per hour so you know more uh, friendly for you folks watching up here and uh, the systems that you use uh, but uh, yeah we've got some pretty strong winds here especially along the coastline uh, along the eastern coastline of these islands and uh, I'm not sure exactly what island this is way out here somebody in Canada or in the United States if you know can let me know but uh, you know 110 kilometers per hour wind gust maxing out at uh, yeah that's pretty big and then you could see again clipping some of maritime uh, Canada with plenty of gusty winds that's the wind side of things. Well, what about the flooding? Again, we're going to see flooding out of this. Let's take a look at those storm surge maps and that rip current map throughout the coming days. 
Let's start with those rip currents. And folks, uh, trust me, I know you're going to see the waves. You're going to see the surf out there. If you're a surfing kind of person, you're going to want to grab the boogie board, grab the surfboard, whatever it might be. Just don't do it. I mean, check out rip currents tomorrow. This is as high as it gets from Florida all the way up through Long Island and even into coastal Connecticut and Rhode Island. Uh, you know, these these are very rough rip currents out here, at life-threatening levels. In fact, we've already had, you know, dozens near probably 100 plus at this point water rescues due to the rip currents out here. And uh, it's going to be, you know, something that we need to watch for. And, you know, you can see that goes from Florida all the way up the coastline into tomorrow. And then by the days after, we're going to stretch up into likely portions of New England as well. So the rip currents are a very real concern with this storm. And yes, coastal flooding, including storm surge, a concern. Yeah, we could see up to four feet of surge into the Outer Banks. Would not surprise me at all. Highway 12, I know my buddy Paige and uh, Bryce out there, or buddies, I should say, Paige and Bryce, are out here covering this right now for Max Velocity. They do a great job. Check them out on social media. Uh, they're going to be taking a look at this, and I guarantee they're going to have footage of Highway 12 uh, you know, covered up with water uh, by the time we get on into tomorrow and your Thursday. Heck, even further south, you know, portions of the Grand Strand up through the Albemarle Sound, uh, the Pamlico and Pungo, uh, Pungo Rivers. I believe Pungo is how you pronounce that. Pungo, maybe. Uh, I should know. I live in North Carolina, but uh, feel free to correct me. And then all the way up uh, into the Del Marva region and uh, the Chesapeake region, especially there, the Rappahannock uh, area and uh, you know surrounding regions there of Southeast Virginia. Going to get a little bit of surge out of us. Water rises for sure. So during high tide, some of those usual areas of flood likely going to be dealing with it here as Aaron works on up the, the shoreline here. Uh, so plenty, plenty of concern concerns here, even without that direct landfall. And I think Aaron is doing a good job of reminding us of that as we continue looking, you know, through the rest of hurricane season, you don't need a direct impact with a hurricane to see trouble. And it goes with the other side. Uh, you can have a direct impact and areas further inland can see concerns. Hurricanes are, you know, they're, they're big behemoths of a storm. They're not tornadoes where it's these super localized areas that get the worst of it. I mean, these things are very synoptically scaled uh, storm systems and thus can bring synoptically scaled impacts, much like winter storms and, uh, you know, of all of those other mid-latitude cyclones that we get uh, during the fall and uh, winter months. All right, that's your update on Aaron. I know uh, kind of just threw a lot at you at once and probably slurred some words. Like I said, not a long day, so forgive me uh, on that. But let's take a look at the other areas and the rest of the tropics here. What could potentially be brewing behind Aaron and could it potentially bring impacts? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, I know I said I was done with Aaron, but uh, literally as I was recording this, we got a new update from the National Hurricane Center. Also newly issued tropical storm watches up for uh, portions of the Delmarva and Chesapeake Bay. So you can see from coastal areas of Virginia Beach uh, all the way up here through the Chesapeake and then down towards uh, the Elizabeth City area and towards the Albemarle Sound uh, now added into those tropical storm watches. So I wanted to add that in here. I'm sure plenty of you already started typing in the comments, uh, but uh, that is the latest there from the National Hurricane Center. Now let's go back on over and take a look at those other areas in the tropics. And uh, let's start with just the general track of any storms that do form. Now, I showed you that area out here, you know, south of the Antilles, well down into the Atlantic. You're, again, thinking, how in the world is that going out to sea? Well, we've got this big ridge of high pressure here. And by the time we get to this weekend and early next week, a big trough dipping down into the eastern U.S. Uh, this is about as loud of an escape route as you can get for a storm. So the thought process is this one's going to get pulled up by the high pressure, brought into that gap, and shoot on out to sea. Right now, at least that's what it looks like, and that's the good news. Obviously, the forecast is always subject to change here, uh, but the one behind it, the one that looks a little more fishy, if you will, uh, south of the Cape Verde Islands, what about that one? Well, that one's going to have a bit of an easier time, I think, uh, getting pushed eastbound. Uh, remember, that one probably wouldn't get to, into the Caribbean or the Gulf or anywhere for you know 10 plus days, and by that point in time, we've got a pretty strong high pressure on here, and uh, that trough still over the U.S., but uh, again, anything would keep getting steered this way and uh, probably into the Caribbean after this next storm. So uh, that's kind of the concern right now is, you know, maybe what's next is far enough south and is going to get uh, pushed by this ridge far enough along that it may not catch that escape route that the first one's going to take. Uh, you can see it here pretty well in the uh, ensemble members. This is the latest from the European. And I'll tell you, it's not picking up on it very well, which is surprising to me because that one looks good on uh, satellite. It's this little area right here. You can see some members trying to get something going. Uh, but don't quite bring it all the way across. Uh, meanwhile, that next area, you can see mostly getting pulled on up and out to sea, uh, very similar to Aaron's current path. 
the GFS ensembles, uh, kind of similar, getting that next one going and pulling it up here. Now, some of the GFS members try to continue to sneak this into the Bahamas and the Gulf, not a very loud signal, uh, but something we'll definitely want to watch. And then you can see that next area tries to get going down here and uh, we'll see what happens. But either way, it looks a little fishy on satellite and I'll show you here. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do something on the fly here. Let's see. Uh, you know, not something I like to do, but it's always fun to do something here at the last second. Let me show you spaghetti models. Yeah, this is for that area that I said looks a little more interesting on uh, satellite imagery. Uh, here is the brand new, you know, latest models on it and see how they keep that one a little bit further, just westbound. And uh, now this goes all the way out to, you know, nearly seven days or so, I believe. Uh, let's see here, you know, maybe 96 hours, so not quite seven days, but uh, you get the point, the next five days or so, uh, continuing to push westbound. So that one, you know, maybe a little more interesting. We'll need to watch it and uh, we'll continue to give you the latest on that and uh, all that good stuff. That's your update on the tropics on this uh, Wednesday, right? <laughs> Let's go ahead now and take a look at that fall cold front on the way and that temperature change that it's going to bring. Well, hallelujah, as they say, right? This is what I like to see this time of year. I'm sure many of you who are a fan of fall-like weather like to see it as well. The biggest blueberry I've seen in a long time on the Climate Prediction Center map. Uh, yeah, well below average temperatures uh, expected here, at least a very high probability of below average, we'll say, right into really much of the eastern U.S. from you know, even near the Gulf Coast all the way up through, especially the Midwest, likely to get the uh, brunt of this one as that next trough begins to swing on through by the time we get to next week. And I'll tell you, this one's going to feel good. Uh, we'll show it to you here. This is uh, it on the way. That's Aaron pulling up the coast the next couple of days. Then here comes the blueberry diving right on into the Midwest, Wisconsin, Michigan, the core of that pocket of cold air working right over you. This is by this coming Sunday into next Monday and uh, just hangs out for some time here and you get a couple of these little troughs to swing on through and uh, even some areas of weakness hanging on there in the flow, bringing some nicer temperatures. Now, here's the real nice part. Not only is it going to bring cooler air, it's going to bring much drier air. Uh, and it's not going to be nearly as muggy as it is right now. Now, the next couple of days, yeah, pretty muggy for just about everyone outside of the Northeast and uh, obviously the Rockies and out into the desert where, you know, it's never muggy. Uh, but uh, here comes that swoosh of dry air. This is Saturday into Sunday, into next Monday, and into next Tuesday. Check it out. I mean, a nice fall air mass all the way down to the Carolina. Charlotte dew point in the 40s. That's going to be the nicest air we felt easily this summer, probably since last spring or even winter, maybe. Uh, and that same general idea is shooting all the way up the eastern seaboard into the Midwest, uh, into the northern plains. Now, notice some of us not getting as lucky. The Gulf Coast, probably still pretty muggy, honestly, and uh, even looks like some of that more humid air trying to hold on there into the southern plains. But uh, this lasts for a while and even tries to reinforce itself a little bit with this really nice fall-like air mass and uh, showing up pretty well in the temperature department as well. Uh, you can see, there we go, by next Wednesday into, let's back it up a little bit because some of that involves rain. How about this? Next Tuesday, now we're talking temperatures 5 to 10 degrees below average on top of a really nice dry, cool air mass. Uh, yeah, that's going to feel nice. Now, notice we've got this pocket of well below average temperatures. It kind of rides on through for some of us. That's actually some rainfall that's being picked up by some of the models here. Uh, notice what happens. Obviously, there's Aaron pulling up the coast. Here comes the next system. Uh, brings a little bit of rain with it, but then what happens is it kind of stalls out a little bit and little pieces of energy here rotate around the southern edge of it, bringing some rain. That wouldn't be until, you know, about seven, 10 days from now. But uh, something we'll watch and see if it's something that, uh, you know, hangs on to the models. But either way, I think the bigger story is going to be the nice shot of air for many of us. Total rainfall over the next seven days. Uh, yeah, some places going to have higher end chances. I still think we're going to get a pocket of higher in rainfall probabilities into you know South Carolina, Georgia, even maybe the Western Carolinas in general, down into the Gulf states by later this week. We could see some rain back out into the Rockies, the Front Range, and even into Kansas, and then uh, some showers and storms up into the Northeast as that front swings on through here by the end of the weekend and into the start of next week. All right, folks, that's all I got for you. Uh, again, I apologize if uh, I sounded like an idiot today. I've been up a long day. I just started school back as well. So, you know, finishing up this degree uh, during senior year can, uh, you know, be a bit of a punch in the face to the sleep schedule and, uh, you know, been, been going nonstop all day. So I appreciate you folks hanging in there with me. You mean the world to me and uh, always, uh, you know, very appreciative of you hanging out. So with that said, y'all have a great one. Stay safe and I'll see you all tomorrow.